will escort the captains to the center of the field for the coin toss. Don James celebrated his 48th birthday yesterday. So many likenesses between the two quarterbacks and the two coaches today. James and Bo Schembechler, both 48. Both went to Miami to play. Miami of Ohio for Schembechler. Miami of Florida for the quarterback, Don James. And Bo Schembechler, very interesting point, as Merlin pointed out, has never finished a Michigan football season with a victory. And this is his 13th chance, or actually 12th chance today. The referees today, the referee is Bill Love of Portland, Oregon. Dan Davey, the umpire from Batavia, Illinois. Headlinesman John Jones of Portland. Line judge Ed Marisich of Calumet Park, Illinois. Field judges Verl Sorgan of Fairfax, California. And Tom Klein, the back judge from Palace Heights, Illinois. From Michigan, Captain Canavino, number 41. Captain Lil Jeff, number 59. Gentlemen, shake hands. Michigan is the visitor today. We've got a coin. Heads is the head faced upward. Tails is the center backwards. You call it in the air. I'm going to catch it and turn it over. You call heads? They've called tails. They've called tails. It is heads. It's your coin and your choice. They've chosen to receive. It's your choice of gold. You want to defend this side, please. Over there. Good ball game. Thank you. Now the Huskies of Washington will get the ball first at the goal to our left, the northern goal. There is a slight breeze out of the south that will aid the team moving from right to left. Don James, team 9-2. and two. He is now the dean of the Pacific Ten coaches, as is Schembechler, the man in longest... Uh, Employment in the Big Ten coaching crew. We'll tell you a little bit about the dangers of the coaching profession, Walter Dick. That's right, James in his sixth year, already the dean of the West Coast coaches. The maze in blue with sophomore kicker, Ali Haja Sheik, and he'll be kicking it deep. Anthony Allen has been returning most of the kicks this year for the Huskies. Nine and two identical records. Wolverines ranked fifth, and the Huskies down in the second 20, or second 10 in the top 20 in the country. One of the things we'll have to be alert for throughout this day in the big victory three years ago by the Huskies over Michigan, they really pulled out all the stops. They threw everything but the kitchen sink at Bo Schembechler's team, and I think uh, you're liable to see some of that today. We may even see it on the opening kickoff or in the first series. 15, Anthony Allen, and Aaron Williams, 91 deep for the Huskies. It's a long kick. Haji Sheik sends it halfway into the end zone where Allen will take the touchback. Set the Washington offense for you as Tom Flick, the senior from Bellevue, Washington, brings his team onto the field. Flick at quarterback. We'll have it the running backs. Desant Taylor and Kyle Stevens, two sophomore wide receivers, both excellent, Aaron Williams and Paul Scanzi. The offensive line, Bale the tight end is the leading receiver with 36 catches, Vandeveer, Curtis, Riley, Carter and Marsh, basically a senior offensive line for Washington. Two huge tackles, both those tackles, 280 pounds, they are giants. Out of the eye from the 20 yard line. Stevens in motion, flicks the throw, Dumps it to Stevens, and he gains three. Good coverage by the Wolverines. Andy Canavino, the captain and inside linebacker with a tackle. The defense for the Michigan Wolverines. A three-man front, Trigovac, a top player, Jeff Shaw, the only freshman starter, Winfred Carraway, Mel Owens on the outside, Paul Gergash and Andy Canavino inside, and Robert Thompson, he's got great speed, one of the outside backers. Second down and seven. Flick tossing to Stevens, out of bounds at the 25, it'll be third and five. Body, the cornerback, and Gergash, the linebacker, with a tackle. There are the deep four of the Wolverines, a young, small defensive unit that really matured during the course of the year. Carpenter and Body at the corners, Bostic, the biggest of the four, and a tough tackler, and Tony Jackson, a ball hawk, that free safety. Dick, we talked about the pressure on young Tom Flick. That defensive secondary has only allowed three touchdown passes this entire season. And they face some outstanding passing teams. Schleister at Ohio State, Campbell at California, a couple of quarterbacks. Flick to throw. 
it complete on a batted ball, and it's Williams down the sidelines. Williams has finally bounced out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and the key to the play is whether or not a Michigan player touched the ball. It went in and out of the hands of a Michigan and Washington player and back to Aaron Williams. If a Washington player touched it last, well, let's see. The ball actually is going to be like, rolled incomplete. It looked like a ball batted definitely by the defender back into the hands of the receiver. So the ball will come back for the penalty call, but it will not be on the, on the catch. It will be on the line of scrimmage. So a weird play on the third scrimmage. Opportunity for Washington of this game. Offensive pass interference, apparently the call. Yeah, we're going to get the signal after they might call off the penalty. It's going to be a 15 yards. Yep. Down to the 13 to the 12-yard line. Offensive oh. pass interference. Okay. Loss of down. Fourth down. That is the toughest penalty that you can absorb in football. Loss of down plus 15 yards. Flick back, gets time to throw that football. There you see the bat. That ball batted back into the hands of the receiver, but as we told you, it will all be called back because of the pushing call earlier, offensive interference. So had it not been for the offensive interference, which we do not see in our replay, that would have been a long gainer for Washington. There was, there was a legitimate pass play otherwise. Now, and that's a, that's a costly problem there. They just had to call a timeout, literally waste a timeout, because I don't think the coaches realized they lost the down on that play. So it is fourth down and long, 18 yards for Don James Huskies and Rich Camarillo, their punter, averaging 38 yards a punt. We'll kick it to the dangerous number one of Michigan, Anthony Carter. As we look at Carter, you'll notice he's one of the Wolverines. Well, on the uniforms they're wearing today, many of them do not have the numbers on their back, but they don't put his number or his name on his back because he uses the tearaway jersey. In fact, they have a dozen number ones available for the game today just in case. But only one Anthony Carter. That's right. <laughs> Camarillo will kick from about his own two and hits a beauty. Fair catch, Carter at midfield. The Wolverines will take over in excellent field position at the 50-yard line after a 38-yard punt by Camarillo. The key, though, to that punt was Carter did not get a chance to return. For the Michigan Wolverines, it's John Wangler, senior quarterback, Stan Edwards, Butch Wolfolk, the running backs, Anthony Carter will be watching him closely, and Alan Mitchell, the wide receivers. We'll check the offensive line after this play. From midfield, Wangler. Incomplete to Butch Wolfolk. Broken up by number 40, Ken Driscoll. The offensive line for the University of Michigan, and as we indicated earlier, a huge five-man unit. Norm Betts is the tight end. Then you have Moransky, Becker, Lilja, Powers, and Paris. All five of those men, from tackle to tackle, made at least one All-Big Ten team. And Lilja, some of the All-American teams, including the Walter Kemp All-American team. Second and ten. Oh, what a hit as the handoff to Stan Edwards and charging through the Huskies for a two-yard loss. That was Mark Giroux, the junior from Mercer Island, Washington. Big hit, an aggressive play by the defense. Edwards getting out, looking for some room, but he's hit deep in the backfield. You can't make any yardage when they get that kind of penetration on you. It'll be third down and 12. Fletcher Jenkins had a piece of that tackle as well. He's considered the top defensive lineman for the Huskies. Wangler forced to throw. Lots of time. Now chased off and dropped by Rusty Olsen, number 64. Co-captain of the Huskies, and it's the defense of Washington that shines early. An interesting thing happens, Dick, to a team who's been ignored a little bit, and certainly if any of the four starting units have been downplayed, it's been the Washington defense. Maybe they got their nose up in the air a little bit and said, hey, don't talk bad about us. We're going to show you what kind of players we are. They've done that in this first series. Ray Horton, a solo safety, is Don Bracken, who set an all-time Michigan single-season punting mark. Will kick it to rush on, and he gets it all. Short kick. 
out of bounds, and Washington will come up with good field position at the 34-yard line. Uh, Washington gains on the exchange of kicks considerably, and we have a timeout in the Rose Bowl. We play two and a half minutes, and the Huskies and Wolverines, no score. Nick Hanberg with Merlin Olsen at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. No score, each team with a chance to move the ball. Both wound up with deficit yardage. First down, Huskies at the 34-yard line. Flick to Stevens, has a hole of the 40. He's all the way to the 50-yard line. The initial first down of the game. They mark it at the 49. 15 yards for Washington. Kyle Stevens is a very, very important member of that Husky offense. He's the lone tailback remaining since Ron Jackson was injured. Dave Bale, not only a good receiver, but an excellent blocker. Right there blocking on number 53, Owens, knocking him to the inside and then breaking out to look for a second block. But Stevens made that play by jumping over the top. Tucson Taylor, uh, Tyler also with an excellent uh, block on that play. Into Michigan territory goes Tyler. Senior from Oceanside, California, a second team All Pac 10 member, Paul Gergesh, number 50 of Michigan, made the tackle. It'll be second down and six. Merlin Olsen, let's recap again to set the scene for this game. For Washington to win, what do you think they have to do? I think Flick has to have a big day. He's throwing the ball very accurately here in the early going, and obviously their defense has to play well, but I think those are the keys. Second and six. Stevens in motion. Flick. Lots of time. Complete. Out of bounds goes Anthony Allen at the Michigan 27-yard line. Twenty yards on the play. One of the questions I had in watching Tom Flick work in practice was, did he have the finesse to throw this pass, which is over the top, waiting until he has just the right opportunity, drops it over the defender, Carpenter, right into the hands of his receiver, Anthony Allen. That's a fine play, and they're going to have the first opportunity to score in this game. The two flankers for Washington, Scancy and Allen, had 61 catches between them. Stevens, big hole, and he gets to the 22-yard line, a gain of five as Owens and Canavino closed in on Stevens when it appeared he'd get much more. Mike Riley with a great block. You can see why the Washington fans have really enjoyed watching this young man perform. He reads the opening quickly back to the inside. That's great acceleration. That's what you need when you get room inside, the ability to pop into the open quickly, and then you saw him extending for the extra yardage. He's impressive here in the early going. Second and five, Washington has driven to the Michigan 22. Flick. Open. First down is Ron Blacken, number 17. Washington is at the Michigan 8-yard line. One of the things we're seeing here early, that Washington offensive line is giving Flick time to look for the open receiver, and he's not wasting those opportunities. Ron Blacken, who survived a near-fatal auto accident five years ago, at 13 catches this year, he's placed Washington first and goal at the 8. Allen in motion. Tyler. Tyler to the four-yard line, and he just ran right over his own blockers. Canavino was in the midst of the defensive charge for the Wolverines, along with Keith Bostick and Brian Carpenter. Bo Schembechler said early this week that the thing that had impressed him about this Washington team was the way they balanced run and pass. And they've certainly done an excellent job of mixing the run and the pass on this drive. Tucson, La Overture Tyler is named after a Haitian hero, his family from Haiti. Second and goal at the four. Tyler gets only a yard, stacked by the center of that tough Michigan defense. Winfred Caraway, Mike Turgovac, Jeff Shaw and company. And now a tough call on third and goal at the three. Bo Schembechler. It's been a new personality for Glenn Bo Schembechler. Don James in his easy style. Celebrated his birthday yesterday, and you can just see him a little hope in his face in that, that reaction. He has a new five-year contract with the Washington Huskies. 
He might trade that for a touchdown right here. <laughs> I bet he would. Up the middle, Stevens didn't get in. He stopped inside the one-yard line. It'll be fourth and goal and a heavy decision for Don James. Just a little draw play, a little delay. They started to fake the pass and handed it late up inside to Stevens. Stevens looked like he was going to break free, but that's 95. Thompson, the man who put the final stick on him, had he not been in the road, it would have been out to the outside. Jeff Shaw there first, but it was Thompson really that kept him from sliding across that goal line. We're going for it, fourth and goal on the one. Nybauer, the second tight end in motion. Tyler, touchdown! The one official roll touchdown, the other is rolling, it's Michigan's ball. I think the ball was fumbled, and it's a question of whether or not he was in the end zone, whether the ball had broken the plane of the end zone before that ball came loose. Goodness, two years ago, Michigan was beaten on a phantom touchdown. Charles White on a similar play, this time despite the fact the official on the far side signaled touchdown, the official on the near side said, no, sir, it was not a score. We talked about the gambling nature of the Washington Huskies. Don James doing exactly that, going for broke wanting the seven points. I think he knows he may not get that many chances to score. And there you saw the ball popping loose as the uh, as, as the ball carry, that's Tyler, goes up over the top. The ball bounced cleanly loose. Good call by the officials. They were right on top of that. Michigan takes over at the one-foot line. And that's close to a safety. Very close. Rusty Olsen, 64, came out of the pile, shaking his fist. He thought he had two points as Butch Wolfe barely got back to the goal line. That's fine defense. Let's let's pat that Michigan defense on the back. We talked about their record. I don't think they've had a more critical series of downs this entire season than that series, even though it's early in the game. You don't want to let a team off seven points ahead of you with a quick, long drive if you can possibly help it, and they've dodged the bullet here. Michigan. A heavy favorite again today. Second and nine. A long nine facing a stacked defense. It's Wolfuck to the six-yard line. And that'll bring up third and a short five. Rusty Olsen again slashing in to make the tackle. Let's uh, take a look at that Washington defense. Fletcher Jenkins considered, uh, well, they say next year's a senior will be a number one draft pick. Brian Stone, Rusty Olsen in the middle. Galliardi, Driscoll, McLean, and Stewart, the four linebackers. Ray Horton, he's very dangerous. Bill Stapleton at the corners. Derek Harvey and Ken Gardner at safety. Third and five, Wangler from his own end zone, going for Carter. Incomplete and no flag. Their feet became entangled, and in the college ball, the officials, in fact, talked to us about that yesterday. Incidental trip with the legs entangled is not interference. It was a call, and exactly as you call it. Now watch their feet. They're both looking at the ball. They're both going for the ball and entitled to go after it. That's an accidental contact. Now, if you watch Carter, when he gets up, he doesn't question it. In fact, he slapped uh, Horton on the hand. Ray Horton, solo safety at midfield. He returned upon 73 yards for a touchdown against USC in a big win in Los Angeles that got Washington here. Don Bracken hits a low one. Ooh. It's returnable. Oh, takes a great bounce from Michigan. Horton all the way back to his 22. And now in trouble. Gets a couple of blocks to the 30. And out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Don Bracken, and we were watching him in practice. Most all of his kicks, when they hit the ground, take a forward roll, and he got a great bounce here. I think that's why they made the ball oblong. What looks to be a very bad kick and a very returnable kick suddenly becomes a great offensive weapon, defensive weapon, as it sends Horton way back to the back of his own field. He does some nifty running back there, tacks it up the sideline to gain a little bit of yardage back. 73-yard kick by Bracken. That'll be the longest in his career. No score, Washington with the ball. No score, Michigan and Washington. First quarter, 6.41 remaining in this period. Washington with the ball at the 37-yard line. That was, by the way, a Rose Bowl record, the punt by Bracken. Flick brings Scancy in motion. 
Back to throw under a blitz. Tipped and almost intercepted by the Wolverines. Marion Body, number three, flying up to try to get that deflection. Unfinished business. Don Bracken's kick of 73 yards officially breaks the Rose Bowl record, long-standing record that goes back to 1919 when Abra Abramson kicked a 72-yarder for Great Lakes Navy, Layden of Notre Dame, and Coat of USC, all with 72-yard kicks, and Don Bracken's 73-yard punt, a new Rose Bowl mark. Dick Enberg, Marlon Olson were... At the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, we understand Georgia has defeated Notre Dame 17 to 10. Tyler bouncing off a tackler. The big guy is out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Here in this first quarter, Michigan stopped Washington deep in its own end. The punt to Michigan, they too were driven back, the kick back, and then Washington marched to a first and goal at the Michigan eight yard line. And on fourth and goal from the one, did not make it in. Some thought it a fumble, apparently has been ruled, just did not get in the end zone, was stopped on the one foot line was Tyler. Michigan took over, had to punt to Washington, what appeared to be a short kick, took a great roll, and Don Bracken, 73 yard punt, position Washington where they now own the football third and six. Flick, complete to Scancy at the Michigan 39. <laughs> 20 yards for Washington and a first down. I think we talked about the similarities between the two quarterbacks. One of the differences in the two quarterbacks, I think Flick has the stronger arm of the two, and he used that strength to deliver that ball right on target. This is a perfect pass. Again, something we talked about early, Lots of time to throw the football, but watch how accurately that ball is thrown. Oh, he dropped that right in a teacup. First down. Kyle Stevens. Smothered at the Michigan 37 after a gain of two. One of the special players on this Michigan defense, number 41, Andy Canavino, leading tackler by a huge margin, almost two to one over anyone else. Canavino reads the play excellently, flows to the ball, and has a piece of the tackle along with Giergash, number 50, the other inside linebacker, who's the number two tackler. But he's their leader. Bo talks about him as the most important man on a very important defense. And following some Rose Bowl heritage, we'll tell you about that as time permits. On second and eight, flick to throw. Incomplete, shooting it for us. Wide receiver Aaron Williams cutting across the middle. Back to Canavino. His father also played here in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl for Ohio State and intercepted two passes in the 58 game when the Buckeyes beat Oregon 10 to 7. Canavino was a little upset that Woody Hayes didn't uh, offer him a scholarship with the Buckeyes, so he went to Michigan and has become a star with the Maize and Blue. Oh, you'd like to go back and rethink some of those decisions, wouldn't you? Can't always be right, can you? But he made a lot of right decisions. Third and eight. That's a triple left formation for Washington. Going deep. And no flag as Brian Carpenter had Aaron Williams well covered. Same kind of collision we saw moments ago. And again, the call. Actually a no call because it was ruled to be incidental and not intentional. Williams a flyer, and he has been their game-breaking receiver. Has not cut many more passes than anyone else, but they've often been deep. There you see the legs in contact right there with Brian Carpenter, both to the ground, but they're both running openly for the ball. The official did not pull the flag. A good no call. Camarillo the punter. Carter on the near side. Kenny Gear on the far side, very high. And Washington can down it. They had a chance. Now, that's a ball they could have caught because there was no Wolverine near the ball. They elected to watch the ball drop, and it goes in the end zone. The Wolverines will have the ball first down at the 20 when we return. 5.26 left, first quarter, no score. Happy New Year, everyone. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson uh, here at the Rose Bowl. Set the scene for you in case you joined us late. 
Michigan, of course, the favorite, but Bo Schembechler, their head coach, has never won the last game of a Michigan season in 11 years, and five of those losses have been here in the Rose Bowl looking for that first win. Anthony Carter, a man who might help him get that first victory, but he's toppled at the 22 after a short gain as he came in motion as he would normally run a pass pattern then looped into the backfield, Merlin Olsen, and took a pitch on a sweep. I think one of the secrets for Michigan today is getting the ball into the hands of Anthony Carter, number one. They'll do it in many ways. This is a new wrinkle. Bringing him in motion, he slides into the position of a back. They flip the ball back to him, and you see he's, he's absolutely fearless carrying the ball. For a 155-pounder, he is amazing. Wangler at the 22, no score. Butch Wolfett to the 25, and it's a swarming Washington defense. Merlin, let's go back and review your comments in our pregame set as to what Washington has to do to beat Michigan today. The Washington Huskies almost a two-touchdown underdog. I really believe that they have to have a hot day from Tom Flick, their quarterback, and they have had that. He has been the outstanding player on the field so far, and their defense must play well, and their special teams must play well. The special teams have played well, and the defense has been the most surprising part of this game. Third and five, Michigan does not have a first down. Wangler, time to throw, and he's got it. First down to his tight end, Norman Betts, at the 32-yard line. Mark Stewart with a tackle. And that at the four-minute mark of this first quarter, 11 minutes played, is the first Michigan first down. Norm Betts made a couple of big catches in a similar situation to that against Ohio State. They like to get him dragging across the field underneath when people have cleared out. Does a good job here of finding a little open room. Mark, Mark Stewart, number 38, the man that's covering him. That's a good pass and a good catch. Betts an academic All-Big Ten first-team member the last two years. Wolf are going to draw. He's at the 40, the 50. Butch Wolfert. We talked about the huge offensive line, and they're taking advantage there. That's Mark Giroux diving to try and get a piece of Butch Popo, but he just runs away from everyone using his fine speed. He's a sprinter, and he sure showed it to you there. 24 yards to match the number on his back. First down at the 44 of the Huskies. Wolfuck again. And another big game to the Washington 33. And suddenly it appears, Merlin, they've gone to some traps. One of the things that will happen when a team is oversized, and certainly the offensive line, just a huge difference in their size and the defensive size of those Washington Huskies, that may not show in the early going because of the emotional pitch of the defense. But late in the game, it's going to come through, and that may be what we're seeing already. Drive started back at the 20-yard line. No score in the game. Three minutes left in the first quarter. First down after the 11-yard run by Wolfhook. This time it's Stan Edwards. And he's bounced down at the 30-yard line. An excellent hit by number 40, Ken Driscoll, a sophomore from Tacoma, Washington. If not for Driscoll's hard hit, Edwards had a lot of green grass to the outside. The thing that is disturbing, and I'm sure it's a little bit frightening to the defensive coordinator, Jim Lambright, is his defense is being blown off the ball. They're being blown back into their own secondary, giving those runners for the Wolverines lots of room to operate. The All-American Carter flanked right. Second and seven. Wangler is going to throw. In trouble. Interesting and uncharacteristic call from the Michigan bench. Of course, the plays are sent in from the sideline, and when the running game is going, you would expect a team that has made its name as a running team to continue to run. Instead, Wagler goes back to pass, pays the price to a fine defensive play by Gagliardi. We should point out that Wagler, recovering from very serious knee surgery, you can see he's not very mobile. He's going long for Carter. And Carter well covered by Ken Gardner, number 29 at safeties. Thus far, they've blanketed number one. He's not been able to find daylight, I think. And 
In fact, Merlin, I think on the play previous, Wangler was dropped for the loss looking for Carter, who was so well covered by Horton. They have put Horton man-to-man -man on Carter, and they're using some zones to try and cover the rest of the field, and it has been very effective. They know they have to keep the football away from number one. Anthony Carter, 46 catches, had 13 touchdown receptions this year. It's Bracken to kick. Ray Horton stands at the 10-yard line for Washington. He pooches it, and it's a good one. Michigan will down it at the three-yard line. Well, the Huskies will start deep in their own end after a 37-yard punt by the freshman Bracken, the first kicker ever recruited by Bo Schembechler. They needed a good punter, and they went all the way to Wyoming to find one. Now sailing high over this beautiful scene in Pasadena, our Goodyear blimp, Columbia, back again this year, bringing us the exciting aerial pictures of this 1981 Rose Bowl game. Well, after a bad first punt, the first one that Bracken kicked was off the side of his foot and set up that first drive for Washington. He has had two great kicks. Loading a Rose Bowl record 73-yard punt. Flick to Tyler, running room. tackle to side Tyler an explosive runner the importance again of getting into the line of scrimmage getting into that secondary quickly you see the acceleration and that's a power hit on Tony Jackson right there to side just unloaded on it that gives flick some room to operate first down of the 15 clock running down to the one minute mark left first quarter Good play action fake and good coverage as Kyle Stevens wrapped up by Paul Gergish and Robert Thompson. Gain of two. Robert Thompson has been all over the field today, the swiftest of those linebackers for this Michigan defense. He's one that we'll keep our eyes on because he certainly has the ability to make a big play defensively. Passing situation. Michigan will loosen that defense. Scancy to the right. Anthony Allen left. And Flick will throw. Out of the backfield. Or actually the tight end, Bale. David Bale to the 26-yard line. First down, Washington. Every defense has a weakness. And Michigan has been willing to give some room in the short outside areas against the pass. This is a delayed pattern to the tight end coming across. He's got a lot of room. And he takes advantage of it, does a good job of running with the ball for the necessary yardage for that first down. David Bale grew up just a few miles from here in San Marino. Been a good homecoming from him. What a fine year he's had. Went to Pasadena City College, so he is back home. Played on the Junior Rose Bowl team. Flick on a roll, has a man. Allen down at the 37. That's near another first down. Well, Washington has had no trouble moving the ball, especially through the air. The problem is they have not been able to get any points on the board. And often, uh, if you are successful moving the football and cannot capitalize with points, that really takes a lot out of you in the first part of a game. They need to get something at the end of a drive. The they've been very good at that during this year, Dick. You're right, Merlin. An uh, opportunistic team they have been inside that 40-yard line. They have scored on almost every occasion. Tom Flick going to the sidelines as the first quarter comes to an end. We've played 15 minutes in Pasadena in this 67th Rose Bowl game. Michigan and Washington are scoreless.